Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm the Penny Pinching Prepper and today we're going to be doing the uh, DIY um, sealable uh, alcohol burning stove. Um, sorry it took a little while to get this one uh, done, but here we are. Um, so we are going to start off by prepping our little canister of uh, quick, uh, quick flame. Um, so uh, what I want you guys to do is get rid of the label, clean it up, and uh, get rid of the, the wick and inside there's fluid. Um, you can pop this inner side out, we eventually will. But if you do, be very careful not to bend it. We do not want to um, mess up the rim of this little inside plate here. So go ahead and clean that up. Take the wick out. Very carefully uh, get the fluid out. If you have to remove the, the inner thing, just don't bend it. No. Only repeating myself because it's important that we don't bend it. So, get that done, get back to me in a few, okay? <clears throat> Guys, if you want a, a quick tip on how to get the, uh, the inner ring out without bending it too bad, if you look right there, you'll see there's a little hole. Use that hole, take your knife, get it in that hole and just kind of slowly give some leverage and pop it up. And you'll see it'll start the, the seam and then you can use your blade to just kind of gently pop it up the rest of the way, okay? Um, I'm going to finish doing the rest of the stuff and I'll get back to you in a moment. <clears throat> Alright guys, so I always forget to give you these little helpful tips before I... <coughs> excuse me. Go and do, uh, do something, but... When you take the sticker off, you always get that really super sticky residue. You, you get it on a lot of things. And people tend to run right to soap or uh, rubbing alcohol to get it off or maybe sandpaper or something like that. And these are all ways that it eventually does work. But if you want a really quick tip, take some vegetable oil, preferably a thicker one like avocado or olive oil. And... Uh, a dry green scouring pad um, or one of the double-sided sponges where it has the scouring pad on one side the sponge on the other and uh, make sure it's got to be dry you, you don't want it wet um, but rub the oil all into the sticky part take the dry scouring pad go over it it comes off real quick and then when you're done you're going to want to clean the sponge out anyway, so put a little soap in the sponge or the scouring pad, either which way, and then go back over it with a little bit of soap to get all the oily residue off, and it, it takes about, you know, 45 seconds to, to get it off instead of fighting it for 3, 4, 7, 12 minutes, depending on, you know, which technique you're using. Um, as you can see, it, it comes out really nice and clean when you do it that way and with no effort i did not put any elbow grease into it or anything just light light brushing so when you get done it should look like that um and then you should have this little piece that looks like this you know and of course you should have a nice lid that has a little seal inside like that all comes a part of it so i'm gonna go ahead and change the camera angle and uh probably work from here on out with a better view for you guys so give me one quick second and i'll be right back with you okay guys so we actually want to remove this inner plate and just just the bottom part we want to we want to leave this outer hole, the whole outer rim, the, the top outer rim and the inner rim. We want to leave that, um, that whole section between my fingers. All right. 
but all the way around and uh, the way I usually do it you don't have to but I usually take a drill and I drill holes all the way around all right and uh, once I get them all drilled down through this bottom plate then I take a, uh, a cutting wheel on a Dremel and uh, uh, cut in between the holes so I get you know mostly a good round circle and then clean it up with <clears throat> a file or a Dremel again uh, whatever you have um, if you don't have a cutting wheel for a Dremel to get that out um, get the holes really 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 close to each other and then you can actually use your drill bit to push through the sides and it'll cut around and then use a file to clean it up all right so i'm gonna get to that and i'll be back with you in a moment all right so when you get all done you should have something that looks like this as clean as you can get it as nice as you can get it hopefully to where it's not going to cut you. you got all the rough edges off of it um once you have that part done then we're going to move on to prep the next part which is going to be the travel size thing of shaving cream and for this the first part that we're going to prep is go ahead and um Get rid of all the, the paint on the outside, you know, sandpaper it off, so don't worry about the, the sticky stuff, you know, at least get as much as you can off. And then right up against the ring here, as close as you can get it to the silver part, cut it on the, the, the edge here so that you're down in this lip. Don't, don't come up here and cut it. Make sure you're down in the lip as far as you can go and cut the top off after you make sure it's empty of course all right guys so <clears throat> i'm gonna get to that and we'll meet up in a second so <clears throat> when you get done guys it should look something like this all right bottom doesn't need to be done because we're going to eventually cut it off but um going to need cleaned out of course um, I haven't done that yet I'm going to do that here in a second I just wanted to show you real fast what that needed to look like you know what, what this comes out looking like when you take it off all that good stuff so I'm going to go clean this all up real fast and get back to you in a second all right guys so all cleaned up looks something like this so the next step is this little ring is going to come over the top all right and try to get it as level as you you possibly can all right and it's going to be hard to get per oh no i'm sorry i'm getting ahead of myself way ahead of myself all right so take this guy take the the cut end and put it down in there all right Make sure you get it level and then mark it off because we're going to cut it. Let's use a pencil so I don't make a mess all over. So when we pull it out, we should have a mark like that, and we're going to go ahead and cut it off with your hacksaw, or I'm using a Dremel, or if you have a Dremel, you know, cutting wheel, use that, whatever. But cut that off and get back to me in a moment. All right, when you get done, you should have two separate pieces. Look like this. This one here, the bottom. Uh, the bottom, toss it. Disregard it. Go back to this one. All right, now 
with this, we got to be kind of careful to make sure, like I was saying earlier, in case you missed it, that we try to get this as level as possible, this, this ring, all right? Try to get it over the, the top as level as possible. Now, it's going to take a little time, all right, to try to get it on there point where it fits and maybe I just maybe this might make it just a little bit easier no, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves don't do that um just eyeball it real good all right um like me this part here it's still you know sticking up a little bit so it kind of throws your eyeball off a little bit so try to do it from the bottom line that you might hopefully have a little better and uh, go ahead and get that good and I think mine's I think mine's pretty much there if you don't get it exactly perfect um, it's okay uh, we can make it up on the other end but it's it's best to get it I just keep repeating myself to make sure I uh, make myself clear that uh, getting that level is important. All right, but once you do, the next step is to get the good old high heat JB weld. All right. In fact, it's time for me to get some more. I'm starting to run low. And cut yourself off a little chunk. It don't have to be real big because we're not using a lot of it. So, uh, you know, just a little chunk. It's not very thick. All right. <clears throat> so, get that. Scrape up the rest of it. All right, and with this JB Weld putty, you got to mix it together. And uh, you'll notice that it starts to get a little warm. Once it starts to get a little warm, that means the epoxy has started doing its job. And you can proceed from there to start using it. But I need a second. I'm just busy cleaning off my knife. Work it in there real good. Hold on one second, guys. All right, so once you get it all good and you feel it warm and it's all uniformed one color, um, all right, go ahead and make your little ball and then roll it out like a, a little worm or something or a piece of string whatever you want to look as it try to get it as thin as possible it doesn't have to be angel hair angel hair pasta thin but try to get it thin All right, so once you got it rolled out thin, just to give you a little comparison next to a pencil. All right, go ahead and you're not needing all of it, more than likely, but fill in the crack between the lip and that outer rim that we put over it. Get it down in there. <clears throat> All right. All 
any leftovers I have, I tend to make these little balls and save them for slingshots. <clears throat> uh, so once you get it just around there rough like, go ahead and press it down in there really good. So it's filling every little nook and cranny that it possibly can between the two. All right, guys. And I'm going to do that and get back to you in a moment. All right, so when you get all done, it should look something like that. You see that nice thick in there, real nice, clean, not uh, really up on the lip at all. You can see there's metal all the way around the outside. All right, now we're going to let that sit and dry, and it's going to take quite a while um, because we're using the high heat, and it takes, you know, about a half hour for it to, to start really curing. Um so for now, we're going to put this aside. We'll come back to it later, but we're going to put it aside. And we're going to move on to this part here, guys. All right. So there's a, a rim on here, and it's really kind of hard to see. Um, but you see how flat that teeny tiny little rim is right at the tip. All right. Um, it has to be at the tip, guys. This is very important. Let me give you an example the best I can show you but you see how those holes are facing directly straight up directly on top all right so this is important to remember that when we're doing this that you don't stray to the side where it's angled and flat at all you stay on that teeny tiny little hard to do ridge on top and the way we're going to do it is with one of these little guys. You get it at an arts and crafts store. I got this one at the Dollar Tree um, in the arts and crafts section. Um, I'm sure you could use a push pin, but they're not, the, the metal's not as strong as these. Um, it doesn't hold up as much. Uh, you have to be very careful because we do not want to dent this at all. All right. We just want to add holes. We don't want to dent the metal at all. So we're going to mark about every quarter inch all the way around, making a little hole with this, all right? And it's not that hard if you're really paying attention and getting it right. And then you just, boom, make a little hole. And, uh... Once you make that little hole, which is hard to do when you're not directly over it, we're going to come back and drill them out, all right? So I'm going to make my holes, get back to you in a second, and show you what it looks like. All right, guys, so you can see the little holes here, and I might have actually messed this up with that one right there. As you see, I kind of dented it just a little bit, and it went in too far. You really want just these little teeny tiny holes like right through here, but um, <clears throat> hopefully I didn't mess it up and hopefully neither do you because that's the hardest part is making sure you don't dent that top at all. And so the next step, oh, hold on a second guys. All right, I found it. So I'm using a 564 564th, 564th drill bit and it's, it's one of the smallest that I can find I can find one a little bit smaller but I didn't quite want to go that small so I'm going to go and very carefully drill out all these holes I mean I mean very carefully drill them out and I'll get back to you in a moment all right, guys, so when you get it all done drilled out, it should look something like that. All the holes facing directly up. All right, and you'll see that if I come to the rim, other than that one right there that I said I screwed up on, and hopefully it doesn't screw up the seal, they're all above on top there. So now what we're going to do is go back and clean it up by hand with sandpaper or a uh, 
very light file. You do not want to dig into this very much. You just want to clean off the burrs and, and try to maintain the, the original shape as much as possible. I'll get back to you in a moment when I'm done. All right, guys. So, as you can see, I got it really nice and cleaned up. Looking really nice and smooth. That's what you want to make sure that seal gets if it's too rough and too so I'm, I'm adding pressure and, and and it's going around and i'm not getting cut um <clears throat> that's that's what's going to help make the seal uh when you put it back uh, put the lid on to make sure nothing comes out so good and smooth try to make it as factory like it came out of a factory as much as you possibly can all right, so we've got that done. I'm still waiting on this to dry a little bit. So, where that's still drying, we can go on to go on to the next step, which is going to be making your crossbars to the to set the pan on. So. What you're going to do is you're going to take your your uh, pan that I told you to get. And for those of you who have made it this far and didn't watch the first video, there is a first video that tells you where I got everything, you know, and what all the materials you need, all that stuff. Go back and watch it. You'll be able to find it in my playlists. Um, uh, fairly simple. So if you have any questions you can either ask me in the comment section or you can go check that video out so what we're going to do let me get back on track is we're just going to go ahead and right along the the corners in this top edge we're going to go ahead and cut it out all right so go on on both sides we don't want the big lip side we want the little lip side so go ahead and cut those out and i'll get back to you in a moment all right, so when you get done, you should have two pieces that look like this, all right? So the next step would be to take a pair of needle nose pliers, work best I found, all right? And right at the ledge, you're going to want to get that down the best you can. And you're going to have to go over it a couple of times, so you'll go over it, you'll get it down. All right, go back and do a little bit more. And then once you get it over enough, go ahead and take a, a hammer, all right, um, or a soft mallet or rubber mallet or whatever, and get this folded over all the way and good and flat. I'll show you what I mean in a second. All right, so before and after all right now you can see it's not super flat it's just folded over nice and even because then what you're going to go next is you're actually going to go along and you're going to crimp it all right see how I, I put that actual crimp mark in there with my needle nose pliers all right, or my tool. And you're going to do that every few spaces about the width of your tool that you're using. And you're going to go and put all those in along all the way across and do the same thing on this one. All right, guys, I'm going to do that and get back to you in a moment. All right, so once you get that done, you should have two pieces that look like this and what we basically did was created a very um, strong and secure ridge to set our pots on so that it won't bend very easy um, all right guys so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to measure each one of these out to be five inches cut off the ends at five inches um, you know, so just measure it in the middle like that, cut off both ends, and um, you want them five inches long, all right? So 
get back to me when that's done. Alright guys, so once you get done you should have two 5 inch pieces that look like that. Alright. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to measure out from the, the fold, um, the top crease part down, one inch and a quarter. All right, and then when we do that, we'll we'll measure. Well, here we'll just measure it real quick together. I'm just trying to keep these videos as short as I can. So, from the top, we want one and a quarter, right there. One and a quarter, right there, and then. I'm just going to use this real fast since I have it handy. All right, so you'll have a little line like that, right? And we want to take this section here off, all right? The, the side that has all the shoot having a problems getting it in focus there the side that has all the little scribble marks there this side down here that's that's the side we're taking off all right do that on both of them and get back to me or i'll get back to you all right so that's what we end up with right so then the next thing we're going to want to do is cut a space for it to go up over here like this one, all right? So what I have in measurements, yep, there it is right there in front of me. Three quarters down from the top. And uh, one and a half inches from the sides. So we'll go we'll mark one and a half inches there. We'll mark one and a half inches on the other side. Actually, let's do it from the side that doesn't have the fold on it, all right? That'll probably make life a lot easier for us. So, one and a half inches in from this side. inches in from this side all right and then once you got those two marks that looks straight enough squared up the best you can uh, if you have a speed square, maybe use that. I'm just eyeballing it today. I'm feeling kind of lazy, to be honest with you. So, draw a line there. Draw a line on the other side, if I can find my mark. There it is. Right, and what did we say? Uh, three quarters of an inch. Yep. So three quarters of an inch from the top, from the the part that's got the fold. So three quarters of an inch from there. So 
and we'll do the same thing on the other side so we have a reference line all right two little marks probably was too much of a glare but i'll show you a better shot in a second then we'll do the same thing we'll line those up and uh Make a little line. So it should end up looking something kind of like, hold on one second. Get a little shadow over there the best I can. There we go. See how it's got that. All right, we're gonna cut off the bottom section between those two lines right here. So we're gonna cut out this little section right here on the bottom side from the folds, all right? Now do that to both of them and get back to me in a moment. All right, guys, so when you get done, you should have two pieces like this. Now you can see I did get carried away, cut a little too far, oops. I'm gonna make it work. Um, <clears throat> It's not a super huge deal because I didn't come up all the way. Uh, so I'm just, I'm gonna go with it. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get these two together like this. So you're gonna split the difference halfway and cut, cut from the bottom up directly in the center. So you'll measure out two and a half inches, make a mark and then this is three quarters of an inch, so split the three quarters of an inch, come up halfway with, uh, uh, cut it up halfway and make it wide enough for this thicker lip to come over it. And then from the other side, you're gonna wanna do the opposite. You're gonna come from the top halfway down 30 uh, of three fourths of an inch. Um, now when you do this, take your time, do a little bit at a time, cut, cut a little slit, fit it in, cut a little bit more, fit it in, because you do not want these to go too far. You want these two tops lips to match up just perfectly, all right? So I'll show you in a second when I get done. Um, so hold on a moment. Okay, so when you get done, let's look something like this. And then the last step you have to do is get it as centered as you can, right, on both sides. Make little marks, all right, and you'll see on this one how it's got two teeny tiny itty bitty little cuts there, all right. And that's what you're going to do to these ones. So we'll make a little mark when we feel we got it centered and cut it. And I'll show you when we're all done here in a second. Okay, guys. So if you did everything right, it should be able to sit on there real nice and support some, some weight securely. All right. So it should look with all the little niches in there don't look perfect but just make it work <clears throat> all right so the next step is going to be cleaning this up and it doesn't feel like it's quite ready to be cleaned up so guys i'm going to take a quick break and let this finish drying a little bit more and get back to you in a second. Okay guys, now that this is really good and dry, I'm gonna show you some comparisons. You'll see how there's a big thick ring of that putty, right? And if you look at this one, you almost can't even see it anymore. It's, it's there, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna dremel this inside out real good and thin that line up so there's not so much um, uh, of the JB weld um, but we don't want to go below 
that ring line and uh, lose our sever uh, where we used the putty to glue the two together, all right? So clean that out real good, make it look real nice. I'll show you in a second what it looks like when it's done and uh, I'll get back to you in a moment. All right guys, so when it gets all done, like I said, it should be way smaller, harder to see, and you can see how you got the silver rim showing real good. And it's a nice uniform smoothness back to the way it was when it first uh, got popped in there um, from the factory. At least as close as I can get, but trying to give you the best views I can. But much smaller now, so that when you go and put the lid on, which looks like this, it's got a little lip that it's going to fit inside of that curve real good. So once you've got that done. Now you're going to want to, oh, that's the wrong one. Um, where did I put it? Hold on one second, guys. So now you're going to want to test fit it and make sure that it goes all the way back in. All right, which this one's going to go. Now you don't need to put it all the way back in. You just want to make sure that it's going to go all the way back in. All right, and this one's going to. So once we know that it's going to do that, go ahead and clean up the bottom a little bit more, make it just a teeny bit smaller. But the important thing that we're gonna do next is we're gonna put two little, uh, oh, where is it, here it is. So, see how I did the little black marker there? Alright, you're going to get rid of that black marker on each side. You'll see there's two of them. Alright? And that's what's going to make um, a little bit of breathing space so that the flame doesn't jump quite as much. It's one of two things that help. So go ahead and clean that up and dremel those out or... Um, However it is, you're going to figure out how to get them out, whatever tools you have. Try not to bend it up too much, because remember, we still got to fit it back in the hole. I'm going to do that, and I'll get back to you in a moment. Alright guys, so if you got it done, it looked something kind of like that. I just kind of roughly did it. Um, I'm getting tired. <laughs> but uh, it's going to work. And so... The next step we're going to do is we're going to take a couple pieces of the steel wool. Now, if you're wondering why I did this from the uh, the shaving cream instead of like a pop can or something, I, I, I really wanted this to last. I wanted to build it to really stand up and, and uh, be able to work for a family uh, for, you know, two or more people and be able to not burn out after, you know, a few uses. So we're going to stuff this steel wool into the hole and we're going to put one on one side and we're going to put the other on the other side. All right, guys. So it's going to be kind of hard, but you can do it. I'm going to do it real fast and get back to you. Okay, guys. So as you can see, I got it in there all the way around. Now, if you're wondering what the point of this is, this is a rather large container. And this um, takes up airspace and makes it to where um, it takes less fumes created for it to be able to gasify easier. So it'll gasify with it all the way down instead of getting, you know, two-thirds of the way down and then stop gasifying. It'll gasify most of the way down. Um, so... Once you get that down in there like that, next you're going to slide this back in there and you're going to have to kind of work it down and get it down in there. 
All right. Because the steel wall is going to want to keep trying to push out and get in the way. So you got to keep tucking it underneath as you push it down. And then we're going to get it down. And we're going to snap it into place to where it's all the way down and flush. I'm not quite there yet, but I'll, I'll tap that in and get it all flush and get back to you in a second. All right, so if you did everything right, it should look like that. You can see I, I did miss a couple of holes down here. I got them kind of partially covered, but for the most part, I got them right there on top like I was supposed to. Kept everything nice and smooth, not too many dents or nicks to uh, screw with when you go to put the seal on. So... If you guys did your job right, as you can go back and look in the first video, uh, that um, it without a doubt does seal up and does not leak when it's done right. And um, we'll put a little alcohol in here. Oh, gosh, I hope. Shoot. <clears throat> Oops. Go through a little alcohol. No big deal. Um, I forgot one little thing. On the inside here, guys, find a place just about, a, I don't know, half an inch down somewhere. Um, no no, no uh, lower than the, the thickness of the, the rim here. So right somewhere in this area but on the inside make a quick hole okay guys all right that's that's going to help things too um from flickering so much so you can fill right up to that hole If you guys did your job right, and if I did mine right, this should light up. Um, it's definitely going to light up. But uh, hopefully it does its job right. All right. And that's got a little bit on the outside that's got to burn off. So let's see what we end up with guys now I'm not using the right fuel I'm using 91 of course you should be using uh, denatured alcohol or the red bottle of heat that's the one that doesn't have the carburetor additive cleaner and um, like I told you guys before this is kind of a little slow warming up so we're gonna superheat it real quick and get it really going so that you guys can see how it works we're, gonna, we're just gonna warm it up faster is all Well, guys, this one's been really fun. I hope you enjoy this one. And uh, that you were successful in getting it going. The only thing I can say is somebody did leave a tip in the comment that you might want to drill holes through the, the crossbars. Um, I'm debating on it. I think I might try it, but I also am prepared to make me another set in case it gets too weak and go back to the, the regular design. Um, because uh, they said that it'll help with the airflow and it hopefully not sputtering so much and to get a slightly hotter. The other thing that somebody recommended was getting some... Uh, fire retardant cotton or uh, felt 
and roll it up and put it down inside that makes it hard in my opinion to uh, see how full you have it but if you uh, do do it it's supposed to help um, it's supposed to help um, things heat up quicker and get gasifying quicker and looking better just trying to finish heating up this alcohol. I took it out of a really cold place. All right, so it looks like it's starting. And this video I know is getting a little long, but we're gonna take a minute, and bring this down. All right. And hopefully here in a few seconds, it's already starting on this side. Hopefully it'll start on that. There's the first little one. It'll start doing its gasification thing. Um, like I said, this is a little slow, but there it goes. It's starting. Well, let's warm it up just a little bit more, guys. Uh, for some reason it's doing it on this side, but not on that side. Probably because I'm heating up this side and not that side, and it's not evenly heated. <laughs> um, that's the one of the other things about the steel wool, is it will heat up and help things gasify as well. So... And of course, using um, uh, better better fuel helps a lot. But well, I don't have much more to say. And this thing's definitely taking its own sweet time here. Why don't we take those off? I, I was told that it does heat up faster without these on. Um, and you can always put them back on. Um, I wasn't kidding, guys, when I said it, it it's a, definitely a, a slow go. If you if you want, hold on one second, and I will actually get this thing going good and get back to you. All right, guys, there it is. Um, I guess I should have put less alcohol in it. I did fill it up. So that it would have started a little faster for you guys. But there it is. And uh, just to show you real fast. If you put a, a pot on top of it. It spreads out real good. Um, especially once it gets going. I don't want to leave that on there. It's, it's still slowly warming up. But you can see that it's gasified and ready to go. Um use better fuel get better flames um i'm just doing this so you can actually see what's going on that's why i use the 91 um but even the 91 works in a pinch it just takes a lot longer to heat up and really get going uh guys i hope you like this video I, I know it was a little bit long especially um you know at the end here trying to get her going uh but you see she works and um if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. If you stuck around this long and you liked the project, please consider giving me a thumbs up. Um, and if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Um, if you're wondering why I'm looking off to the side, it's because I'm watching it on my TV. <laughs> uh, so I can get a better idea of what's going on. Um, so please, by all means... Uh, you know, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. Leave me any comment you want. I can take the brunt of just about anything. Um, I think that's about going to wrap it up. Remember, God's good and God bless.